Hey, what's up guys and welcome to Teardown Tuesday. So today we're going to take apart this Chinese tablet. You can find a review down below in the description. And now I would say, let's get directly started. So guys, here it is, the Honda VA20CH. You can find a review on my channel. It's basically a Windows 10 tablet, which is quite okay, but well, um, some things like the build quality really sucks and also the speaker quality, but well, today I want to take it apart to show you the internals, how big the battery is and everything. So yeah, let's get started. As you can see, there are no obvious screws here, so probably we can just remove the back cover by just peeling it off, and yeah, let's try it. So ladies and gentlemen, there we go now, let's try to separate the case parts, and I usually use those plastic, I think they're called prior tools or something like that, and yeah, I will try now to get the back off. And that will start here probably at the top where we have all the connectors and yeah just go in there with your tool and oops that was too hard yeah I'm not really a soft guy but <laughs> um, there we go let's try to get off here the back and yeah you probably have to be careful with the buttons now I killed so many buttons on so many devices but I don't really care about this tablet because it's yeah kind of crappy not really my main tablet but honestly I have to say really mm, not bad for the price so hundred dollars and you get a working Windows 10 tablet which runs quite fine but well the storage is very limited and this sucks a little bit also the speaker and the overall build quality you see everything made out of plastic bends here really a lot now let's go over here to the top side let's try to get off the top here and okay it's a little bit tricky here in front of the camera because i don't really have a lot of space there and let's try it okay it comes off here too oh holy crap i hope i don't kill the display but this tablet is really quite robust so I'm pretty sure it won't break. Alright, so we have separated now the back here from the rest. The buttons are falling out because they're made out of plastic. And now let's have a look at the um, build quality of the internals here. Alright, so the buttons are pretty cheap, not really the best quality. So maybe let's start here with the back cover. Here we have some kind of a shielding sticker. And here we have, as you can see, some golden contacts. And this is basically an antenna loop. So this is probably for Wi-Fi because this is the only... Um, yeah, connectivity thing which this tablet has integrated. Alright, so that's the back cover. Now let's go over to the main board and the battery, and this is really huge. So guys, there we go. Here's the motherboard all along with the battery. As you can see, the battery is pretty big in the size, but the thickness, yeah, it's not really thick. It's just a couple of millimeters, and yeah, really huge battery, 3.7 volts. It was actually made 2015 in October, if I'm right. And yeah, um, you can see here the motherboard, we have here the EIF shields, under there we have the chipset, so we're definitely going to check it out. Completely fanless and everything, yeah, for sure it's a tablet. And yeah, what I can see on this cheap tablet here, they fix all the connections actually with some kind of tape. So, a really sticky tape here, and actually you don't need that if it's, yeah, assembled correctly. But well, on those Chinese devices, I often see that they just tape it down. Okay, this is how it looks like. Um... You can see here the speaker, so this is the one and only speaker, and it's actually a pretty crappy speaker. So there's also the VA20 um, dual boot version with Android and Windows 8, and it has the same internals except of the chipset. And honestly, I have to say, speaker sucks. You can see very thin cables sold here to the mainboard, so you should be careful that you don't um, break the cable. And now I would say, let's get out the battery, so I can see the connector for the battery is here. So, in order to get it out, you just have to grab a screwdriver and just pull out here the connector, and there we go. So, let's give it a try. And yeah, connector is out. Actually, we should now be able to um, get the battery out, and for that, you shouldn't use a knife, because if you stab the battery, if there's a little charge in there, and if you poke the cells, then yeah, it can burn down, so it will just bloat up and then... There's not some kind of explosion, but, well, um, massive fire, as you have seen in my other videos, probably. <laughs> and, yeah, um, to get the battery off, you should take a credit card. Or, yeah, this is my gun license, by the way. The photo, just check this out. I look like a psycho. Maybe let's take my student ID. And, yeah, there we go. So don't do this with a knife or anything which is sharp. And just try to get the damn battery pack off from the back of the display. So, they use some kind of adhesive tape on the back of the battery. You should also not really bend the battery too much, but well, I don't really care about that right now. Just want to get it off, and there we go. So here's the battery pack. A little bit deformed right now, probably damaged some cells, but yeah. Still looks good, and yeah, 3.7 volts doesn't state anything here about the capacity, just the production date, and that's it, guys. 
Now let's have a look here at the other internals and you can see here a flex cable connecting this um, kind of cheap bottom PCB here with um, the top mainboard. By the way all the connectors on the top side so this bottom PCB here, not really sure what it is doing, but we're going to check it out just in a second. And yeah, some more tape here to fix all the connectors. Now to open up those connectors here, you just have to yeah lift up the little bar here made out of plastic. You can do it also here at the bottom. And then you can actually just take out here the flex cable. All right, so this is how it looks like. Now I would say I will quickly just um, open up all the connections. By the way, I forgot to remove the SD card. There's still a 64 gigabyte SD card here inside, which works pretty fine in those Windows tablets. So it won't be mounted as an internal hard drive, but still you can um, swap the page file to it to get more space. But yeah, you're very limited on space because it comes with 32 gigs of eMMC and after the Windows installation, not so much memory is left anymore. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I will do right now is I will just open up here all the connectors. So that's probably for the display. Then we've got here the camera. You see it's also held by some tape. And there we go. Okay, so it's connected here to a little connector on the main board. I say connector way too often, but there we go. So let's lift off this bar. Now we should be able to get out the camera module. Okay, so this is a dual module all along with the front-facing camera and they even use some kind of glue to fix the camera module in there. So hot glue looks pretty cheap from the inside. Like, yeah, everybody could assemble that. Now, yeah, it's glued in there so I don't want to kill the flex cable because we still want to do something with the tablet like doing durability test or band test and see if it survives but um, yeah, here we've got the camera model right now, sticks here on my screwdriver and here we have probably, what's that, front, okay, so um, either that's a little battery or a vibration motor, so we'll quickly check it out. So guys, that little thing which you can see right over here with the very thin cables, it's actually a microphone, you can definitely see that if you have a look here um, from the other side at this little thing. And yeah, there's a slot here almost not noticeable in the left top corner, and this is actually, yeah, for the integrated microphone. Okay, so here's a closer look at the motherboard, we have here the um, SD card slot, we have here the IF shields, camera connector. Now this one here seems to be for the digitizer, well this one here seems to be for LCD which goes down all the way to the bottom, to this uh, yeah bottom PCP which actually also controls the display. Alright, so yeah, that's it and now I would say um, yeah, let's just remove all the connections and also the screws and then I can quickly show you how it looks from the other side. Well, what you can see here, we have some golden connectors, actually pins coming out of the mainboard and they are touching yeah the antenna loop in the back cover so this is actually the whole antenna here which is yeah like this on a lot of devices okay guys and there we go now let's unscrew all the screws so we can also peel off here the um, anti-radiation sticker and you can see it has here um, aluminum foil on the inside so this prevents oh it comes off with, with the RF shield and yeah here we can see um, the main processor which you can see here so Intel and here we have a couple of chips so Kingston this is probably um, yeah memory and EMMC storage and let's quickly have a closer look here at the chipset. So here a closer look at the chipset. I just want to show you quickly how this is actually built up. We have here the CPU. It says here SR, so sorry I can't really read that. So it says here um, SR9C, so this is actually the model number for the Intel Atom X5 um, C8300. It's a Kotka processor released 2015, clocks up to 1.84 gigahertz if I'm right. We have here four Kingston modules, so this is basically RAM. Um, four times, I guess, 512 megabytes, which equals two gigs. Then here we have the um, eMMC storage. So this should be 32 gigabytes, and it's from 4EC or something like that. So it says here 32 gigs, and you can Google that if you want to. So that's the storage, and here we have the power management IC. Um, it's the AXP288C, if I can read this here correctly. Now here you can see the IF shield, which is, by the way, also the heatsink. So you can see here, um, yeah, the thermal um, pads. And yeah, pretty cool actually. So it looks completely different than any other CPU. So this really looks like an, um, yeah, almost um, desktop CPU. So you can't replace that. It's, actually, you could replace that, but it's soldered 
to the motherboard and would take a lot of effort for a damn hundred dollar tablet. But honestly, I have to say, um, build quality looks quite okay. Um, it's really cool that the heat dissipation is so low that just here, thermal pad and the AF shield here is everything you need to keep that cool. That's absolutely awesome. And now I would say, um, yeah, let's get out the motherboard. Let's check it out from the other side. I have to just um, remove here the button so they're still connected and also take care of the speaker, which is solar to the main board. But let me quickly do that. Okay, just separated the tablet here from the rest. Basically, the speaker was also um, glued to the back of the display. Absolutely nothing special. And yeah, um, everything special is here placed on the front side. You can see here the back side. There is nothing fancy except all the connectors are here solar to the back side. Same goes here for the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And yeah, guys, that's it. So that's the motherboard. Everything very small. So most place um, is actually used by the battery, which is um, double as big as the motherboard. And now let's have a closer look at the display. Now this is what happens if you don't do the job on your own. So I just went for a little coffee. I let Flo um, just take this apart. And as you can see, yeah, the glass is broken. So, oh my god, I'm bleeding. So, damn Chinese tablet is almost killing me. Alright, so you can see um, the glass is broken right now. This is because um, there was no heat applied. And yeah, um, there's some kind of adhesive tape here on the inside, which holds the display basically inside of the frame and here right under the glass. So, you should heat it up a little bit, then the display comes off easily. But if you don't do that, um, the glass really tends to shatter because it's really stiff. And the glass itself, it's not really scratch resistant. So, it's some kind of plastic glass and it's really super thick. Now it breaks easily but it's also very thick so you can definitely see there is some kind of um, gap between the display and the actual glass. If you have a look at that the viewing angles of the display are really kind of bad. Now the display itself it looks good completely black when it's turned off also the resolution of the display is really quite good so here you can see how that looks like but honestly I have to say the viewing angles are not really good but the resolution definitely awesome. You you can see here the panel, yeah, here the number, and yeah, the bottom PCB thing there was just actually the control for display. All right, guys, so I can quickly also show you the digitizer, so how it looks like. Now, basically, here's the connector. Inside there, we have um, also the connector which goes into the glass. And yeah, that's it. Buttons are integrated here inside of the frame, and that's the whole um, device from the inside. So I will now put it back together. I'm pretty sure that the digitizer still works, but well, um, the glass is shattered, unfortunately. Um, we have the motherboard here. I have shields. We have the battery right over there. So I will quickly put this all back together um, yeah, off camera and in the next video you'll probably see some other tests with the tablet or any other tablet. Now thanks for watching Teardown Tuesday again. Just leave us a comment down below what you want to see in the next video, what you want to see from the inside. It could also be a fridge, it could be an old car, whatever you want to. Leave us a comment down below and we are trying to get it. Now thanks for watching guys, have a nice day and bye bye, see you soon.